One month ago, I received an email that completely stopped me in my tracks. I was invited by Ubisoft to fly out to France alongside Huts and the Completionist to play the, at the time, very secret, unannounced Prince of Persia The Lost Crown which is now announced, so I can finally show you this picture of me and Rabid Mario without breaking my NDA and getting sued. Anyway, this video is sponsored by Ubisoft and I wanna thank them for their hospitality and just for an overall amazing experience. It's by far one of the coolest things that I've ever done. And if you'd like to learn more about Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, click the link in the video description. It was also my first time in France, so exploring Montpellier was really cool and I ate gelato every day. And did you know that you can get a macaron as a topping? I almost didn't come home. Full transparency, I've actually never played a Prince of Persia game, so this was my first experience. And if you haven't watched the announcement trailer yet, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown both takes the franchise back to its roots and in a completely new direction. So it felt like a fitting introduction. Our day started with the reveal trailer, following some team introductions, but we weren't allowed to film, so here's some footage of cats or something. We were then given a tour of the studio, which was rad. When you first walk in, you're greeted by a giant rabid Mario statue, and to the left is a hallway lined with various pieces of Rayman concept art. We were then shown some behind the scenes development from a number of very cool people on the development team, from animators to sound engineers, and learning about the intricacies and many moving parts that go into bringing Prince of Persia, The Lost Ground to life. From my experience with the demo, and you'll get to see some actual gameplay with live commentary real soon, this game has everything I enjoy in a Metroidvania. The combat was fluid and fun, exploration and puzzles felt rewarding, and the game had plenty of style. It was actually mentioned by multiple people on the team that this game took heavy inspiration from anime with big flashy attacks. And trust me, there were lots of them. In fact, the entire day, everyone I spoke to, each build I played, I felt the passion oozing from the lines of code. The team at Ubisoft was extremely proud of their work, and they had every right to be, because this game was exciting. And for the first time, the game's protagonist isn't the Prince of Persia, but a character named Sargon, who is tasked with rescuing the Prince of Persia. I did play some segments that we weren't allowed to record, but if you're worried about difficulty, there's definitely something for everyone here, including a difficult trial and error, fast-paced platforming segment that killed me at least a dozen times. So here are my first impressions and some live commentary of the Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, followed by interviews with the game's director, world director, and producer, where you also get to hear me sound like a bumbling idiot because I've never interviewed anyone in my entire life. Okay, so I was warned by Ubisoft that as soon as I step through those doors, I'm gonna be met with some very nasty creatures, so I should probably figure out what my moves are now. So we have this attack combo. We have air dash and dash and dodge. Looks like that's parry. I have, oh, what is this? Oh, I can bounce it. Oh, that's cool. I have arrows. Oh, wait, I only have 10 of those. All right, yeah, that's enough. So I would also just like to say that I was put in my own room because I like to do live commentary and I was very disruptive at the Mario and Rabbids event. So I don't know if that means I'm a VIP or if it means that I am problematic. I'm serious, Orod. Probably the latter. Strange presence here. I can feel it too. And there's only one way to find out. <laughs> let's go then. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go mess up some skeletons, or I don't know whatever we're gonna fight. Ooh, everyone here looks like they're in rough shape. Yeah, there's no way some of these dudes don't come back to life. I'm calling it now. Farah, this is Azad. One of Ardashir's men. Take, take the sword. Don't yeah, oh, there's no way he's not waking up in 45 seconds. They left not long before us. Oh, uh oh. What are these? Why is the room crystallizing? We are not welcome here. Stay on your guard. We will find the Prince and Anahita. All right, gang, let's split up. We go east. We so, uh, go what anywhere. is Sargon's diet You're and workout routine? Down. Because how do I look like that? 
Oh yeah, that, that black mist is not good. Here we go. So it looks like this is the tutorial fight, which means I'm gonna get messed up. Because that's how these things go for me. Alright, let's see. Just, just hit you with the, the old one, two, three. I'll three piece them. Oh wait, oh, that's how, okay, that's how you parry. So yellow glowy eyes, parry. I'm a natural. This is why, ouch, this is why they invited me to play this. Yeah, idiot. You wish. Very nice of them to give up their gems after I, yeah, stay down. Make it easy on yourself. Oh, hello. Gonna try that again? I'm over here. Ow. Okay, so health bar top left looks like I only have like four hits. Also, just a note, I am playing an early build of the game, so your gameplay experience will differ from what you're seeing now. You'll probably be a lot better at the game too. Although I don't know if that's possible. Just look at these moves. I promise I parried that. Okay, so I'm gonna drink a potion. And I was shown a uh, trailer that you may or may not have seen yet before coming in to play this. So, oh, I have to wall jump. Uh, this game, gotta say, looks like a lot of fun. Okay, that's how that's done. Get these crystals. I don't know what these crystals do yet. If I had to guess, probably for some sort of upgrades in the future. I'm also gonna admit that I am relatively new to Prince of Persia. I haven't played any of the uh, previous games. I know Sands of Time is like, that's the one. That's the one that most people love. And let me know what your favorite Prince of Persia game is if you're a veteran player in the comments section. Okay, I can air dash, which, oh, <laughs> There's also a lot of cool combos you can do, like, you know, I could, like, launch them, and then I could do some air combos. Okay, something's down here. Oh, press down and A to cross over the platform. I'm gonna follow my nose here. Is it this tree? Let's see, what is this? Press A for amulets. Oh! Okay, so, looks like you have uh, different amulets that will change abilities or multipliers or... Let's see, what do I have? So it looks like four royal stars slightly increase aerial attack damage. Princess Roxana slightly restore health after a successful parry. I'm going to need that one. Void Spear create a laser beam dealing slight damage while using the shadow teleport power. What else do we have? Oh, it looks like I have nothing equipped. So let's go with the successful parry. Let's go with air damage. Okay, I can't wear that one. Additional attack at the end of a standard combo. That sounds fun. And convert a small amount of damage taken into Athra buildup. And <laughs> you know I'd be taking damage. So it looks like Athra is that gauge at the bottom. I don't know what that does yet. Or how to... Oh, here we go. Yo! What? We just incinerated this dude. So I think I have an attack ability and a, some kind of heal. All right, let me get on the opposite side. No, no, you don't. I want to do that again like a common enemy because why not uh that was dope so as you okay yeah this spikes so as you land attacks and in my case take damage because that's the charm that i selected you'll be able to build up this after and i assume as the game goes on we'll have more abilities that we can choose from but okay all right ouch easy fellas i i don't drink the potion can I parry? No, I can get skewered. How do I get around these guys? I mean, that works. Or I guess you just beat them until they drop their shield. That makes sense, too. They are made out of, like, driftwood. Die! Drop this bridge. I guess they just have to, you know, be good at the game. Oh, I see. Bring it back up to... What, what is this? What is that? Some kind of rift? I like how my first instinct is beat the hell out of it, and... Oh... I thought that was going to be a boss. That was going to just be like, uh, why have you wakened me from my slumber? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> we just spiked him. Okay, where's the next one? I think I have to... How do I... Ow. I, I'm busy, pal. Okay, that seems right. Can I, can I parry to get some health back? Maybe not from you. I'm having fun. I'm having a good time so far. Okay, can't go this way. Unless I can somehow break it. No, the prism light bouncer will not allow me entry. Oh, there is a sprint button. So if you hold dash, you can actually run. Here's some arrow restocks, because they're like, you're probably going to need these. Something's telling me there's some kind of puzzle here. There's something that I'm not doing. Oh, wait, uh, just shoot an arrow. Okay. 
it's literally as easy as that. And you are rewarded with gems. All right, the Haven. Hello, who are you? Oh, here's where we can spend some of our, uh, our gems. Okay, we have upgrades and we have buy Soma Petal. Don't know what that does yet. Seed of the Soma Tree permanently raises amulets carrying capacity by one. Horned Viper, slightly decreased damage from being poisoned. Haven't had to deal with that yet, so I'm gonna ignore that one. You know what, let's go with the upgraded healing potions. So this has to be like the town or one of the hubs that you don't have to worry about anything killing you. Here's Hello. One who searches for something out of reach, beyond control. Who do you serve, I wonder? Um. You know about me. This is like the difference between someone who's 5'11 and 6 foot. I turn my eye to the human world when I choose. Who are you? A god, clearly. Your hair is made of flames. The average person I, I don't think Persia is capable of sustaining of that. Kahiba, goddess and blacksmith to the gods. I forged their greatest weapons. Oh, do I get weapon upgrades here? Have you forged weapons for mortals? I've served mortals from time to time. King Darius's sword was some of my finest work. Yeah, I'll have I'll have one of Few those. Other mortals are worthy. Would you forge for a mortal again? For a few time crystals, we might come to an agreement. Yeah, I don't think I have any of those yet. Understand this. Even in the skewed reach of time, a mortal's life is insignificant. Hmm, thank you. That makes me feel real good. Anyway, how many time crystals do you need? Oh, I spent all my crystals for coming up here. Oh, those are just regular crystals. These are the time crystals. I don't have those. All right, I'll, I'll come back when I have some money. Okay, that's not the way to go. All right. Ow. Oh, ow, oh, he's got an axe. My guess is I probably... Okay, do, dude, just... Let's try that again. There we go. Oh! <laughs> okay, that, um... That looked a little bit painful. I feel like the knee to the face was probably enough. Can hang on to those, but hang on, there's something probably down here. Ooh, careful, careful, careful. It's fun doing combos. It's also fun just like launching dudes. We're gonna have some more advanced platforming. But since I'm a seasoned platforming veteran, Clearly, look at me. Autumnal forest. Oh, the mushrooms go away. Oh, what? Hey, what are you? Do it. Ah, got him. Can I go down here? Yes. I don't know why I thought he was gonna like just do something parable right out the get go. Oh, hi. You looked friendly for a second, and I considered not swinging my sword at you, but uh, that went out the window very quickly. I don't think anything in this game is your friend, or anything that's not in, like, town. The platforming segments are very fun. All right, we're in the lower city now. Real seedy part of town. That don't sound good. I, it's probably best that I'm sprinting. Something about this screams boss fight. So let, let's open the door. Probably gonna be met by a cutscene. Here we go. Just a giant scorpion? Come on, why does everybody have to be mean to me? Your life ends here. Yeah, we'll see about that. Jahandar, you are big and scary. Something tells me mashing is not going to be great here, and I probably need to do some parrying. Can I shoot him in the eyeballs? Oh, okay, I see. I see my opening. But it's not that. He telegraphed that from a mile away, and I still missed. Oh my god! I got crushed! Alright, round two. I'm just, I'm just warming up, pal. 
You missed. See, I learned. You're gonna tell me I didn't parry that? That's a lie. Back off. He's just not even flinching. Dude's taking arrows to the eyeballs. Come on, I, I want to parry for massive damage. There we go. No, get back off. I like how colors are being integrated into the game. All right, let's dodge this. I think I got the hang of it. Ooh, someone's mad. Gonna throw a temper tantrum. Um, I don't like that. Gonna get, just parry that one. Oh, I have a, an ability too, so you know what? Let's use that now before that purple storm cloud decides it wants to end my existence. Can I destroy it? I can. Okay, that is breakable. And it is broken. What? what? Where'd that come from? I have no health. Uh, don't like that one bit. Oh, God. I, I wish I had, a, like, just a little heal. Just a little bit. Because I think I'm the one actually getting the spanking. Okay. <laughs> also pretty cool how, like, the ball... Oh, it shoots lightning. Okay. Listen, I can only deal with one thing at a time. One thing at a sands of time. I, I got it figured out now. Ow. Okay, drink, drink the potion now. Now's the time. Sargon's like giant demonic demons tiring you out. Enjoy the cool, refreshing taste of a health potion. There we go. Dodge, dodging everything. Oh, that's poison. Now would have been a good time. Ow. Now would have been a good time to... Oh, I'm getting crushed. Oh, oh, I see now. Okay, please. Can I just stand in the, the healing for a second? Okay, actually, that, that works out for me. I was like, why don't I have a healing ability? But I do. And you, sir, about to take a permanent nap. Good night. Hey, give me a little slice and dice. Mm, you tried it. Let me just line that beard up real quick. Okay, that was intense. All right, the recording's over. You can get up now. Hey, man, you good? So I just wanted to say thank you for having me today. It's It's been an honor to be invited to Ubisoft and, and get to demo uh, the Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. I'm actually, I'm a newcomer to Prince of Persia. I know a lot of people have played Sands of Time and in previous entries. This is my first experience with Prince of Persia. So we learn about Sargon, who is uh, the main character for this game. How would you say he stacks up to previous main characters? Of course, if this is a, a new character, if this new chapter, mm -hmm. a new Prince of Persia, and uh, for the first time, he has a name. <laughs> this is a good thing. This is not the prince also, which is a super uh, uh, important thing in our mm -hmm. game, because this time you, you, won't be, uh, you won't play the prince. He's part of a group of elite warriors, and with this group, you will have to save the Prince Hassan, who has been abducted. Mm -hmm. So this is a great, big, big, big change in the, you know, the story of the, this franchise. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a departure from gameplay, but it also is a return to roots, because older Prince of Persia yes. games, like on the Super Nintendo, were, were platformers, were 2D platformers. What were your biggest inspirations with returning to roots? First, it was our desire to Yes, to back, to coming back to the roots, but also to, to respect our strengths. We have a, a great story with platformer games, etc. We know our strengths and we wanted to put everything to mix up, to show people that 2D action platformer can be mod modern. Mm -hmm. We think here in Ubisoft that this kind of experience can, could be super immersive. Uh -huh. What were some of your biggest challenges? you know, converting to a Metroidvania. I mean, this is obviously all new for Prince of Persia. Yes, oh, for sure. As a developer, uh, working on a Metroidvania is super difficult. Mm -hmm. And even more, if you want to put a big narrative in it. You know how much in Metroidvania games, the world structure and your character progression are super tied. Mm -hmm. But when you add a big narrative, you have to do it well because you don't want to compromise the player's agency. He has to be an actor of this game. Mm -hmm. And the story should not tell, me, tell him how to do things because in Metroidvania, it's super important to respect player's cleverness and autonomy. So it's almost like 
you're working through your own Metroidvania to create a Metroidvania. Yes, it was first, you know, the tricky thing with the Metroidvania genre is to begin with the what before the why. It's mm -hmm. super mechanical as a, as a genre. This is not a disadvantage, but it's super easy as a designer to make it the, not in the right way. Mm -hmm. It was the first, uh, our first duty was to make a Prince of Persia game. We had in uh, our mind a specific story, you know, kind of uh, like a war movie, like uh, this Black Hawk Down uh, team going into a hostile world and uh, everything goes wrong. And it was supernatural, of mm course, -hmm. because uh, the Metroidvania genre can give this sense of isolation. Mm -hmm. What were the most important aspects of the franchise that you feel could not change, that were non-negotiable? For sure, the, the, there are some um, pillars like mm -hmm. acrobatic fight, platforming sequences mm -hmm. and uh, puzzles that are super important uh, in the franchise. Mm -hmm. So you have to respect them. But um, because we, we wanted to refresh the, the brand, it was kind of also a challenge to make it feeling like uh, a Prince of Persia game without compromising you know, the, the familiar image that uh, you, you could have of the game. An example, in Prince of Persia, the sense of time trilogy, animation, was super important. Mm -hmm. It was super cool. You had this feeling, movement, and it was super important for us to respect both this, uh, you know, this, break th this breakthrough, <laughs> sorry, and um, you know the, the choreographic aspect. Mm -hmm. But this time, because you know freedom is super important for us, the challenge was to recreate those kind of choreographies, but without compromising character controls and uh, control responsiveness. Mm -hmm. So being able to uh, interrupt animation, being able to, to, to use your defensive skills, to create your own skills and to mix up all the, the tools you have in hand, this thing that was super important for us to respect your self-expression. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I've played, it seems Sargon has uh, a wide array of abilities from the start. He has his two scimitars, he has a bow, he has a boomerang. What can we expect in terms of growth from him throughout the game? The first time you have to understand that is uh, at the beginning of the game, you won't have everything that you, you played. Uh -huh. uh, the teleportability, uh, the air dash, even the, the bow. So you start with a smaller package. Even with this kind of ability, you can do a lot of things. And by coming uh, uh, into this journey and uh, progressing to the game, by uh, confronting some obstacles, you'll have the chance after that to find new abilities. The first one being the bow. And after that, mm -hmm. you'll see, because I don't want to spoil anything. Just imagine that when the first time you will cross the, the, some, some areas, you have traps and you have to deal with them. But after that, there will be tools. Mm -hmm. And it's super cool. My last question for you, and I know it was mentioned in the past that there are a lot, a lot of anime inspiration, yes. you know, for animations and, and cutscenes. And if I had to ask, what is your favorite anime? Oh, I would go with um, Berserk. So I'm currently reading through uh, Berserk. I just started. Um, I'm on volume one, but so far, it's oh, fantastic. Yes. Beautiful, an beautiful uh, illustrations. Um, I'm not that far yet, but I heard it gets really good. Yes, yes, it's, and uh, it, it, it evolves uh, uh, with time mm -hmm. because you have specific, you know, you, you can see that uh, Kentaro, Kentaro Miura san uh, on his works earn some maturity by mm -hmm. working on this. And you can see how much his characters are really deep. In each of his characters, they, they change with uh, the story. And this is also a part that is super important for us because in, even in uh, our game, we, we wanted to capture you know, the, 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 the fact that this is a coming age uh, story. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Guts <laughs> in Berserk, or as uh, uh, some other characters in a shonen or anime, uh, he will evolve. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, it's, it's kind of a neural vision of the world. He's, he's killed or to be killed. But by confronting some obstacle, he will, be, he will grow as a human. Mm -hmm. You see by playing the game, but one of the meaning of the game that is super important and that is tied to, you know, the shonen, it can be called also neketsu genre in the anime. The fact that during all the course of the game, uh, Sagan will have to answer to this specific answer. 
what does it mean to be strong? What does it take to be strong? Mm -hmm. And this is something that you find a lot into animes. And of course, I'm always a fan of DBZ, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Demon Slayer. Oh, I actually have a. Uh, so oh, yes. It's funny you mention I have a, a Go Tank tattoo Super and Demon Slayer. I have Demon Slayer. Oh, I have yeah. a Sakanji. Uh, Super. Yeah. Tattoo. Some Final Fantasy VII. Yes. Cloud. Someone in the the grocery store they saw it and they said Berserk. I said I like Berserk, but no Cloud. Ah yes, yes. It's yeah, it's super cool. But yes, I I, I love also uh, Vinland Saga and even Vagabond. Mm -hmm. Vagabond from Takeko Inoue. I haven't seen Vinland, but it's on my list of things to watch. Cool. But um, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for the opportunity to play Prince of Persia. Looking well, forward to seeing more of it. Thank you guys, and I hope you will enjoy this game because we put all our love and our energy into it. And this, this, this comes from our, you know, from people that are, are investing all their love to, the, mm -hmm. to, this, to Prince of Persia and all their love to, to players. Because mm -hmm. our first uh, uh, goal is to make a great game. And from everything we've seen today, it, uh, that absolutely stands true. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Thank you. So just real quick, I want to say thank you very much for the opportunity to play Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. From what I've played so far, I enjoyed it a lot. As a big fan of Metroidvanias, I've played through games like Hollow Knight, Metroid Dread. I've played platformers like Celeste, yes. Super Meat Boy. So I'm seeing a lot of inspiration come from games like that. Now you are, you're the world builder, or I, what is your official title? The world's director? World director. Mm -hmm. What is the most important thing that you wanted to, to keep notable from the Prince of Persia series when building this new world. It was really important for us to keep close to the gameplay pillars mm -hmm. of, the, of the series. So the platforming, mm -hmm. uh, demanding platforming, engaging combat, and uh, have uh, puzzles too. When designing a Metroidvania, you know, you want to create a world that that is, you know, it's massive. It's, it's biomes that you're going to continue to return to you know, well after you leave them with new abilities to unlock new things. Can you tell us about some of the variety we're going to see in these biomes? Uh, for, for the areas, uh, as you said, it's very important in the Metroidvania to have a, a big contrast between the mm -hmm. different areas. So um, we took our inspiration in the mm -hmm. legendary Persia. We have areas that are you are used to find in a Prince of Persia franchise like mm -hmm. Palais, things like that. And we have also some very fresh areas like the forest, mm -hmm. like the shallows, that will be very surprising for players that are not used to find mm -hmm. this kind of areas. So I'm a newcomer to Prince of Persia. I haven't played any previous entries. So some of these areas are completely new to the franchise. They're unexplored, like, I don't know, uh, there hasn't been any forest areas in past games, is that correct? Uh, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Now, you were talking about um, inspiration. What are some worlds that inspired you and inspired you to, to build this world? Um, in terms of structure, um, uh, some games like Hollow Knight or mm -hmm. uh, Tunic. Tunic is very mm -hmm. uh, interesting game. The, the, it's mostly interconnected mm -hmm. and um, the, we try to find this kind of surprise when you you find a shortcut. Mm -hmm. This kind of structure that leads naturally the player through the areas by giving him uh, some hints to understand the world, how the world uh, works and uh, he can use his abilities mm -hmm. to uh, explore more areas. It's very uh, important, it was very important to us to have a consistent world that the player will be able to uh, understand by uh, talking with the NPCs mm -hmm. to get to gather some information. And um, so like that, we give some hints to the player to uh, guide him and also tease him on new areas and uh, things that are very exciting for the player and that uh, bring motivation to uh, continue the game. From the beginning of the game to the end of the game, I guess, how can we expect the evolution of how Sargon can interact with the world? We have um, a lot of ab new abilities and don't want to spoil too, too much, mm -hmm. but uh, we have a lot of traversal abilities that will uh, allow the players to pass through quickly, faster, through an um, environment that is uh, already visited, so we mm -hmm. have a great feeling of empowerment 
uh, some of the, the abilities will allow for um, the player to uh, uh, grab things on uh, uh -huh. the ground um, with the, the warp and to, to move elements or where um, he was um, in, um, in front of dangers and traps, he could reuse use this against uh, the enemy, so mm -hmm. he could interact with, uh, with some traps and thanks to these uh, traversal abilities, he could move faster and move higher and um, it would be also in combat a new way to approach the combat because mm -hmm. our combat system is uh, can have different play style, can prefer to have a ground combat and use the parry and mm -hmm. the and everything. But we, it's also um, uh, it gives the opportunity to move quickly around an enemy, things like that. So it will be a, a large set of new abilities. Mm -hmm. And I just one last question for you. If you yourself could live in one fictional world, what would it be? A good question. Um, maybe in the world of cyberpunk. Cyberpunk, cool. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. your time and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. And uh, I can't wait till the viewers see more of it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. So thank you so much for having me and allowing me the opportunity to play Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Um, from what I've played so far, so much fun. I was having a blast, you know, obviously, it's taken inspiration from other popular Metroidvanias, but it adds its own uh, fresh twist because it is under the Prince of, it, it's a new Prince of Persia game. Um, what were the most important things to preserve when creating a, a new entry in the Prince of Persia series, but making a completely new genre and making it a Metroidvania? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing that was very important for us at the beginning is really to to preserve the DNA of mm -hmm. Prince of Persia, all the legacy, and it was basically acrobatic combat, mm -hmm. even if you wanted a modern way, so a new system of combat, puzzle because this is something very important in the in the brand, mm -hmm. and also narration and exploration. So that was really uh, the element that we want to to keep, and that was very important for us that. All these elements will be linked by one uh, strong concept is time, because time has been always important in Prince of Persia Brown. So we wanted really to have in all the elements, narration, combat, and uh, yeah. exploration, the time, uh, the time elements. Now, we've gotten a taste of, what, of how time is going to play into the game. Uh, is that going to be something that is going to grow as the game goes on, and there's going to be more elements that involve time? Or is it, have we seen all of what we were going to see? No, there's still a lot of surprise regarding time, mm -hmm. on gameplay element, on environment element, mm -hmm. and also on narrative element. You mm -hmm. have seen a glimpse of what Prince of Persia, the last crown, mm -hmm. will bring to the table. So I'm new to the franchise. I haven't played any previous entries, but this is the first time we're playing as a character that is not the Prince of Persia. Now the directive is to save the Prince of Persia, correct? Yes, exactly. You play mm -hmm. Sargon, so a new, uh, new character. It was also one of the decisions at the beginning of the project. What are the elements that we want to keep and what are the elements that we mm -hmm. want to change? And it was on the narrative aspect, try to bring a new uh, modern take on the narrative. And we saw that it was important to give uh, a new character to play in order to maximize also identification mm -hmm. and uh, having these new characters on, uh, on the game. When we were introduced to Sargon, he was explained to us as a uh, as a young tiger and the way he moves and I guess his his abilities. How can we expect him to grow, not only in abilities throughout the game? Yeah, uh, I cannot reveal everything in order to not deliver spoilers, but mm -hmm. it shows that for us it was important that the main characters has a strong journey during the during all the game mm -hmm. as the players evolve. The character will evolve, the world will evolve, so I cannot deliver some details because it's uh, uh -huh. very important for players to, to live this, uh, this mm -hmm. journey. But yes, for sure. See, yeah. At the beginning, he seems very rough around the edges, so I'm looking forward to seeing how he grows and, and uh, kind of smooths those out and, and grows in his, own, in his own arc. What were some of the biggest challenges that you and your team faced uh, when creating 
a Metroidvania-style Prince of Persia game? Oh, there was a lot of uh, lot of challenges. Uh, the structure of a Metroidvania is uh, very complex. Mm -hmm. It's a genre that is uh, very complex to build because the players has a lot of autonomies, and we wanted to add narration to this. So this is a strong challenge. Mm -hmm. Also, we wanted a, a right balance between puzzles exploration, narration, and combat. Mm -hmm. Also to bring uh, the unique signature we have in the game. That was a lot of conception to say, okay, what we bring from Prince of Persia, what mm -hmm. we bring from uh, the Persian mythology, in fact, it was that has also a lot influenced the game. Mm -hmm. so basically, it's, that's the basement of the game, but also bring some comics influence, Japanese influence in the signatures mm -hmm. and make things that everything's working together, the combat, with the visual signature, with the art direction, that need a lot of iteration, but I think that now we have something that is... Mm -hmm. Cohesion is important. Now, you mentioned um, inspiration from Persian mythology. How much research goes into um, Persian mythology and integrating that into this world? Oh, it was a lot of a lot of work, and uh, that was uh, the first element that we have done is deep in mm -hmm. the mythology, uh, deep in uh, visual arch architecture that we have, uh, working also with experts to mm -hmm. ask some questions, uh, trying to understand all the all the figures, but in the same way, uh, take this element and uh, try to make. Uh, a visual interpretation mm -hmm. because we didn't want to be something very realistic so that was a lot of work to design the element mm -hmm. in the same way that you are uh, respectful and uh, you are in uh, Persian areas but you are in something that is completely designed uh, mm -hmm. for, for the game. Now clearly this is a departure from past Prince of Persia games. Um, what is the most important thing to preserve I know you said it was DNA, but is it um, is it gameplay? Is it character style or design, or is it um, is it along the lines of story? It is a DNA because um, even on the on the gameplay, we have changed a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some new powers. Uh, we have decided to give uh, iconic time powers to the main antagonist. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a, a twist, a narrative twist. Uh, but I would say that. What was important for us was really, really have uh, acrobatic combat mm -hmm. and uh, responsive controls for, mm -hmm. the, for the players. After, for the gameplay first from the beginning. After spending an ample amount of time with the game, both playing it on Switch, playing it on PC, um, the controls are definitely fluid, responsive. Um, I know people often bring up other Metroidvanias, you know, let's speak about Metroid Dread or Hollow Knight. One of the reasons I enjoyed Metroid Dread was because the controls were very responsive. Samus would, um, she, she was very responsive to her surroundings. You lean up against the wall, you know, she puts her hands to the wall, um, and we can see a lot of that in this. Um, it was also mentioned multiple times that there's a lot of anime and Japanese influence in the game. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite anime that inspired you? Basically, the game director, the animation, are really a mega fan of uh, anime. Mm -hmm. On my side, I know a little of anime, but I'm not. Uh, I have not a big knowledge of uh -huh. uh, of uh, anime. I can say that I'm quite fan of uh, Arkane, the French uh, the French anime based on the League of Legends. Mm -hmm. uh, I also enjoy very much uh, uh, Attack the Titan. I don't know in English. I, I guess, uh, yeah. Uh, but. Uh, the team has been a lot of influenced by Dragon Ball. I think mm -hmm. it, uh, you can see it. Uh, you can yeah, see it in a lot <laughs> of the cutscenes. Yeah, of course, Dragon Ball. And the art director also have uh, uh, big, big influences from uh, from mm -hmm. uh, Japanese art, but also on comics, comics elements like Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse, mm -hmm. for instance. My last question for you is, if you could live in one fictional world, um, aside from Prince of Persia, what would it be? Oh, I think that currently I'm living in Hyrule. <laughs> <It's laughs> I think a lot of us are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, definitely it's uh, the world I love the match from uh, from a long time. So mm -hmm. I really, uh, I really, I'm a really a big fan of uh, the Zelda series uh -huh. from the beginning. Yeah. So leave me on Hyrule, and I will put uh, a lot of hours. <laughs> Yeah, um, unless, you know, uh, a demon king comes and, you know, tries to destroy it, then in which case, if you're just a regular person, you know, maybe not the best place to live. But thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm looking forward to playing more of Prince of Persia and looking forward to showing off more. Um, and is there anything you want the, the viewers to know about the game that we haven't covered? 
I don't know. I want to say to your viewers that the team is so passionate by the game we are doing, and uh, we hope that uh, we'll deliver the, a very strong experience and that players will uh, enjoy it, because we enjoy it developing, mm -hmm. uh, developing it, and uh, I hope that uh, now, in a couple of months, the game will belong to them. So, mm -hmm. and uh, after playing it, I can confirm that there is this game oozes passion. It is it is a very very large passion project, and it it was a fantastic time. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. Uh, nice meeting you. Thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks again to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video and flying me out to their headquarters. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is out for all platforms on January 18th, 2024. If you'd like to learn more about the game, be sure to click the link in the video description.